All right, object key paths by Chat Chen. So get all possible paths that we could be called by underscore dot get, which is a lodash function. So we have yet another lodash. Like, why are we still tortured with lo <laughs> <laughs> For anybody who hasn't seen it, I think it was Josh Goldberg and I did a challenge that also used this syntax. There are a couple of the TypeScript challenges that has you work with this syntax. This syntax is terrible. And like, if you use it in your code, stop using it. There's an ambiguity here where what if we have a value? So we see person and person dot name. Okay, let's go up to this. What if we have a, a thing here? Um, dot name. This is completely valid. Okay. Oh, this is, wow. This is completely valid JavaScript. What happens? I never then? thought of that. Right. So like, this there's an ambiguity that's introduced where like what happens if you have dots in your property names, which is totally okay. Again, um, like this syntax has, and it's not the only thing. It's just so tricky for the sake of it. Do you know what's nice? If you want to do something like this, use an array that has. So instead of person, sorry, I'm like ranting about something unrelated to the challenge. But if you have something like this, and you want to you want to have a path that a user can pass. Give them an array, and they can pass values. And if and if the thing is an array, then they can put a number here, or something, um, you know, whatever. This is way clear because then if you say person dot name, it's absolutely obvious that this is a property called person dot name and not two things that we're indexing deeply into. Okay, sorry, Andrew. You, I'm sorry you had to hear that. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. Um, this is this seems like odd syntax to include in your in your type definitions. So, yeah. Well, I mean, if you were going to type the lodash method, then or, or the lodash thingamajing, uh, you would need something like this, right? You, you would have to figure out some way to do this. So, um, okay. I feel like you could just say string because un unless unless the idea here is that we're going to strongly type these nested, um, it is like oh, all right. Well, let's let's do it. Um, I have quite a few, just for the sake of time, like, t so tell me like, okay, so. So I'm familiar with the idea of like using a string literal type, and then we can like basically use string literal syntax to parse out parts of a string and then like do other stuff with them. So we could easily like check that these are keys of like of an actual object. Um, mm -hmm. It would, it would definitely take me a while to, I think, figure out the exact yeah, syntax yeah, yeah. for this. But I feel so, like I, I'm, I'm aware of the, the pieces we'll use here. OK, so let me actually, because there's some casting and other things going on, I'm just going to paste. We have a few to get through. So I'll just like we'll just start with taking a look at the most common one I saw. OK, so this is Team Chong in human detail. Uh, we'll come back to add prefix in a second. This is where the string manipulation stuff you were talking about happens. But just looking yep. at the top level type. so. Object key paths. So we're going to get back a union. That's mm -hmm. what this whole thing returns anyway. I didn't mention that, but it returns a union of all of the possible paths of the object deeply. So okay. deeply means as soon as I say that word, you should know we're going to be recursing somewhere. Okay, that's where that is. Yep. Um, we create a temporary var variable that is used as the kind of accumulator. So we could call this ACC actually would be a better name, more consistent name with how we've been naming these things, except in this case, the accumulator is not a tuple, it's a union, but we say we initialize it to never because never in union speak is an empty union. So mm -hmm. if we uh, union anything with never, we just get back that thing. So, okay, that's the base case of recursion. And then we create an object and we map into that object with key key of t and we have to use this and string or number thing to cast because otherwise typescript is going to say hey um you know t is not necessarily like key of t is not necessarily string or number because actually the other thing it could be is symbol right so we're kind of taking symbol out with an intersection um, oh that's could, a nice tip we could probably also say um string uh Maybe we could get away with something like that. Oh, and then so if we said string unknown, then we hit this problem here. Okay, well, so we have to we have to handle that complexity somewhere, and these people chose to handle it there. So otherwise, it's I guess a regular... we need to support like arrays as well, right? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, exactly. Uh huh. Um, otherwise, it's a, just a regular sort of mapping. The values themselves are 
this is where the, the kind of magic happens. So if it's an object, then we pass it again recursively through. Now, Andrew, are you familiar with, there's a syntax in TypeScript where you can map over arrays using this, this syntax. Um, is that um, just using then like the um, square brackets, like number at the end of it? Is that what you're talking about? Or in this case, like key of T? Yeah, um, so if we pass an number? array to object key paths, it would mm -hmm. hit this branch. Right. And it's a weird yep. thing about how all of that works. And yeah, I mean, it, it's just one of those things. Arrays are assignable to, uh, so if TK is an array, like let's say, you know, T was like one, two, three or whatever, it, it, this, will, this will be true. It, it is assignable to object and it will go in here. And then because of the way this, the syntax was modified in TypeScript to work, this syntax will operate over the values of an array, which is kind of an interesting tidbit. But yeah, I guess that's why we're using object here instead of record, like you said. Yes, yeah. yep, totally. Perfect. Yeah, thank you for explaining that. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. So then we pass in our accumulator to this add prefix thing. And we pass in the case. So that, that part is the same for both branches. So let's go up and look at that. This part is pretty common to all of the other different solutions that I found. So we have our, our input string, and then we have our path. We're going to first check. We're, we're going to do this as an is never check. We're going to make sure that the string mm -hmm. is not never. And if it is, then we're going to just kind of stringify the path and pass it in. But if, if so, the it, idea it, there is like we're at the top level of the object. There's no prefix for this path. Yes, perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what K cool. would be, um, or the accumulator would be at that point because it is initialized to never. So, mm -hmm. fine. We just initialize that first thing. Otherwise, um, we're going to we're going to create all of the like a union of all of the different things if they're if it's a number. So that meaning like if it's an array, because remember, like we said, arrays can be passed in through here. So we're going to grab like dot zero, the bra the braces, dot and the braces. So we have to have all of these. I don't know if anyone will fail. No, no, yeah, none of them fail if we take that one out. I think something will fail if we take this one out. No. Oh, we don't. We don't actually use. We I feel like right we're. Here. Are we not looking for those syntax on like line forty nine and fifty? Um, I think we are. So maybe I. Maybe my TypeScript server crashed. Um, here, restart TS server. Okay. Well, I was expecting at least one of the. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my TypeScript server crashed. Okay. So if we take those out, then those like ways of indexing things will fail. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, if it's not a number, then we can just pass in the path. I mean, I think actually it wouldn't really matter if we like, let's say we just did this. Uh, oh, it, it does. Okay. That's okay. So yeah, that's, that's one solution. W and, like, what do you think about this? How bad is this? Um, I mean, I, I'm struggling to see like practical uses for it, but I, I do like the example of like adding prefixes and building up strings like this. I think this can be definitely helpful. The I've been playing with syntax like this for like strongly typing um, like uh, an API, like a REST API, mm -hmm. and where you have um, often like you'll have a like a lot of hard coded strings that are like the, the acceptable URL paths. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do a lot of cool stuff to with this type of uh, string literal syntax to then like make sure that the paths you're using, say in your front end code actually match real paths that your, your backend is going to support. Um, so I think it's, it's super useful to understand like how to use and build up these string literal things. Uh, yeah. Totally agree with you. Yeah. That, that was, thank you for, that was a great explanation. Um, I mean, you're right. It's not useful because you should never do this, but if you have to do this kind of thing with Lodash to get actual values out, um, I mean, I see. I see your point is like, uh, you, you know, why would you need a union of all possible types to index with this crazy Lodash thing? Like, it's like multiple levels of disbelief that you have to jump through in order to find a use for this type. So, um, I agree with you on that part. Uh, oh, concat path, and then um, so this one is from Dryland. Okay, this is the last. Um, oops, uh, there we go. Okay. So let's go through it. So this is the, I told you that it was this mostly the same, and I think it is from, from place to place. So we have this never check for the path concatenation stuff. Um, I thought this was interesting. I left it in. So 
the actual like reading of it used this syntax to you know usually this is how we break distributed distributivity uh, it's not actually mm -hmm. needed and you can just because we have tests you can tell that by taking that part out and then um yeah i mean i just thought it was kind of interesting instead of handling all three like notice in this example we had before it was duplicated um this right. this uh p this this path part was here was duplicated um they they kind of did things in reverse, which I, I think is is interesting. So, um, well, it's basically the same. And then um, mm -hmm. here they used I left a couple notes. They used record string unknown, which can just be object because uh, it doesn't. It's at that point it doesn't really matter. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. So if T extends an object array. See, this is the thing. They didn't, this person, Dryland, did not handle, uh, they didn't abuse that, well, abuse is the wrong word, but they didn't use the fact that you can do that mapping structure stuff with the object syntax. They handled arrays right. individually. So we're, we're kind of grabbing the T and we're seeing whether or not it extends an array. So if it, or an, an object array. If not, then we're seeing if it is, extends any other kind of array. And then if not, then we're seeing if it is in itself an object. But all of those steps can be compressed because arrays are objects and the, the, the object kind of mapping syntax works for arrays. Yeah. Yeah, that is definitely, I think, one of the strong takeaways for me from this one. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but I mean, other than that, honestly, it is fairly similar. I mean, it does it does handle. We have we have these. Uh, we're indexing into the actual paths. T number gets a union of all of the properties because you know that's the only thing you could get back with with uh, passing number generically to uh, to an indexing type. From that point forward, I mean, it's it's really very similar. We have, like I said, compat, concat path is is almost the same. But see, look, one, two, three, four, five. We're calling it five times because we're handling like, is it an object array? Is it any other kind of array? Is it an object itself? So we're going through all of this stuff. Uh, it's you know, it's it's just uh, it's more obvious perhaps, but it's harder at the same time. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, that's that's that one. Um, Lodash strikes again, I guess. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> let's keep going. Yeah, let's do it. 